Welcome to today's episode of the Daily History Podcast, where we scale the highest of human achievements and stand atop the pinnacle of mountaineering feats. Join us as we retrace the historic ascent of Mount Everest by the legendary duo Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay in 1953. Towering above the earth at an awe-inspiring elevation, Mount Everest, or as the locals call it, Chomolungma, has always been more than just a mountain. It's a symbol of the ultimate adventure, the pinnacle of exploration. To conquer its peak is to write one's name in the annals of history, a feat so many have dreamed of, yet so few have achieved. Even before Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay stamped their names onto its peak, Everest enticed explorers and adventurers. The British had launched several expeditions in the early 1920s, pushing the boundaries of human endurance. These early attempts were fraught with hardships. In 1924, George Mallory and Andrew Irvine vanished on the mountain, prompting the world to wonder if they had reached the summit before they met their fate. There was an almost magnetic draw as this majestic peak became the backdrop for epic tales of the human spirit striving against the forces of nature. As the decades rolled by and the challenges remained, Everest garnered a reputation as the ultimate test, one that could affirm a climber's prowess. Numerous expeditions battled against cruel winds and crippling cold, each time pushing a little further and solidifying the legend that surrounded Everest. These historic efforts set the groundwork for what would become a legendary 1953 climb, and each tale of endurance added another layer to the mountain's ever-growing mystique. Today, let's immerse ourselves in the bravado and meticulous planning of the iconic 1953 British Everest expedition. At the heart of this historic undertaking, we find three pioneering individuals, John Hunt, the expedition leader known for his military background and organizational expertise, Sir Edmund Hillary, a New Zealand mountaineer with a profound passion for the peaks, and Tenzing Norgay, a Sherpa from Nepal whose expertise and experience on Everest were unparalleled. The journey to Everest's summit began not on its icy slopes, but within the committee rooms of the Royal Geographical Society and the Alpine Club. It was here that the framework of the expedition was drawn up, under the leadership of Colonel Hunt. Financing the mission during a post-war climate proved to be a challenge, but the endorsements from prestigious mountaineering and scientific institutions, alongside public donations, made the dream feasible. Preparation for this expedition was a colossal affair involving careful planning, selection of the right team, and acquisitions of all necessary gear. Beyond the climbers themselves, the overall composition included a mix of scientists, medical doctors, and support staff. With the main objective to place a British team on the summit, a spirit of nationalism enveloped the mission, as it was seen not only as an adventure, but also as a chance to reinstate Britain's stature in the world after its empire had begun to unravel. The backdrop of international politics played a subtle yet significant role. Nepal had only recently opened its borders to foreigners, and the geopolitical tension between Britain and the newly formed People's Republic of China over Tibet lent an urgency to the British attempt. Given this window of opportunity, there was a palpable sense that failure was not an option, and every logistical detail was scrutinized, from the oxygen systems to the high-altitude food supplies. Certainly, the courage and adventurous spirits of Hillary and Norgay were critical to the expedition's success, but it's crucial to recognize how the broad ensemble of technical, logistical, and human factors set them on the path to the summit of Everest. As dawn broke over the rugged skyline of the Himalayas, the early stages of an ambitious undertaking were quietly unfolding at the foot of Mount Everest. Against the backdrop of an unforgiving terrain, a dedicated team of climbers and support staff set their sights on a feat that would etch their names in the annals of history. At the heart of this endeavor laid a string of advanced base camps, vital lifelines that edged ever closer to the sky. Each strategic outpost, set up at daunting altitudes, served as a crucial checkpoint for the climbers. These encampments brimmed with supplies, equipment, 
and a shared resolve, vital for the formidable ascent that lay ahead. Yet, the success of these early days rested heavily on the shoulders of the indomitable Sherpa community. These local heroes, well acclimated to the thin air and treacherous landscapes, became the unsung bedrock of the operation. Without their expert guidance and unwavering support, the path to the pinnacle would have been unthinkable. Laden with heavy loads, the Sherpas worked in seamless unison with the climbers, embodying the spirit of mutual reliance and respect. It was not only the Sherpas, but also every member of the expedition team that wove the fabric of this epic tale. From scouts to physicians, each individual played an irreplaceable role. As they trudged through the snow and ice, the climbers' reliance on each other deepened, their bonds strengthened by shared challenges and the anticipation of what might come. Camaraderie became the climbers' beacon in the harsh landscape. Together, they navigated crevasses and faced blizzards, each step forward a testament to their collective willpower. The stories of their teamwork, often punctuated by laughter that sliced through the cold air, were as much a part of this journey as the physical progression upwards. On the eve of the final ascent, the team gathered, not just as climbers and Sherpas, but as a unified front of hopeful individuals. Each had left footsteps in the snow that would soon lead to the highest point on Earth. Here, on the shoulders of giants, the stage was set, not with grandeur or fanfare, but with the quiet confidence of those who dared to dream amidst the giants of the Himalayas. As Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay embarked on the final segment of their historic climb, the air thinned and the wind bit with an unforgiving chill. An insurmountable obstacle to many, the Hillary Step loomed ahead, a nearly vertical rock face just minutes shy of the summit. This 40-foot wall of rock, named posthumously for Sir Edmund Hillary, was both a literal and figurative gatekeeper to the world's highest point. On the morning of May 29, 1953, Hillary and Norgay awoke in the highest camp on Everest, Camp Tyne, perched precariously at 27,900 feet, it was higher than any camp had ever been established before. They were on the cusp of making history, but first they were faced with a series of life-altering decisions. One of those was choosing the very route to navigate the Hillary step, knowing any mistake could be their last. It was Hillary who saw a potential path. With careful steps and sheer willpower, they climbed using minimal equipment and relying heavily on their own resolve and strength. Overcoming such demanding and treacherous conditions on Everest is a testament to the feats of human perseverance and endurance. The diurnal temperature swing that created sheets of brittle ice, fierce winds that threatened to toss climbers off the mountain, and the omnipresent danger of avalanches underlined the nearly overwhelming risks they faced. It was an environment that pushed the boundaries of existence. Yet, Hillary and Norgay continued, step after grueling step, driven by unyielding spirit. Their arrival at the summit at 11.30 a.m. local time was the culmination of collective human grit and interminable hope. As they stood at the top of the world, 29,029 feet above sea level, they became the symbols of reaching beyond the limits of what was deemed possible. At the close of May 29, 1953, when Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay returned from the highest point on Earth, the news of their remarkable success spread like wildfire. The conquest of Everest gripped the public's imagination across continents. The accomplishment became a symbol of post-war resilience and unity, bringing a ray of hope and grandeur to an era that had been shadowed by conflict. Newspapers heralded the pair as heroes of a new age, with their names etched into the veins of history. For Hillary and Norgay, however, the victory was just a gateway to a future neither could have envisioned. Sir Edmund Hillary, the beekeeper from New Zealand, found himself vaulted onto the world stage, knighted by Queen Elizabeth II, and became a part of the very fabric of New Zealand's national identity. His later life was marked by philanthropy as he dedicated himself to the welfare of the Nepalese people, establishing the Himalayan Trust to contribute to the construction of schools and hospitals. His partner, Tenzing Norgay, 
also rose to prominence, not just as a celebrated mountaineer, but as a symbol of pride for the Sherpa community and Nepal at large. He devoted much of his life to fostering a safer, more professional mountaineering industry in the Himalayas. The duo's success at climbing Mount Everest wasn't just a brief note in the annals of history. It carved out a new trajectory for the world of mountaineering and the broader horizon of human exploration. Their triumph encouraged a new generation of climbers to test their limits and defy the boundaries of what was deemed possible. The spirit of exploration, which propelled Hillary and Norgay up the steep slopes of Everest, continues to kindle the curiosity and adventurous spirit in countless individuals around the world, motivating them to pursue their own versions of Everest in whichever field they seek to conquer. The year 1953 stands as a touchstone in mountaineering history, etching Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay's names onto the fabric of the Himalayas. It was not just the summiting of Everest that left a legacy, but the very path they blazed for future explorers in this wild, majestic range. These intrepid climbers showcased what was possible, extending an open invitation to adventurers and dreamers alike to test their limits against these ancient monoliths. More than the physical accomplishment, the ascent of Everest in 1953 symbolized an extraordinary coming together of cultures and spirits. The Kiwi beekeeper and the Sherpa mountaineer stood shoulder to shoulder, their triumph transcending boundaries and becoming a powerful sign of unity. This partnership underscored the importance of collaboration and set an example for climbers healing as diverse teams from around the globe would continue to lean on each other to achieve their lofty goals. As we reflect on the significance of that historical climb, it's essential to recognize the personal Everests that reside within each of us. Perhaps today, you're facing a challenge that feels insurmountable, like a peak shrouded in the clouds of uncertainty. Hillary and Norgay's journey is a testament to the fact that with determination, teamwork, and a dash of audacity, such peaks can be conquered. Take a moment to envision your own Everest. What might it be, and how will you embark on that ascent, not just to reach your summit, but to uncover the strength and resolve you hold within? Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey to the roof of the world. If this tale of extraordinary human achievement has inspired you, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below with suggestions for future episodes. We're eager to hear your thoughts, and the suggestion with the most likes will stand a great chance to be featured in an upcoming episode. Until next time, keep climbing your personal peaks and exploring the history all around us.